Hey, what's up guys? So I'm going to show you some of my horror DVD collection. Since it's the month of October during Halloween season, figure I'd show some more of my horror DVD collection. And hopefully I, I show a good amount in this video. And I'm going to try to go through these quickly. So we're going to start off with a 80s classic, which is... House, which is a really good horror film, and this is a unique uh, set because it has the original classic House, and it also has House 2, the second story, which I will show you. As the first House film. And it has House 2. These older DVDs, they showed the artwork on the desk, which was really nice. I don't think they do that anymore. Not to my knowledge, anyway. And then we got some cool poster art here. I hope you can see that very well or not. House Horror Has Found a New Home really cool and then here it's got this sequel poster art house 2 the second story frightening strikes twice now they've made house 3 which actually is not called house 3 it's called the horror show and they've also made house 4 and the first film was the best one. The second one is not very good. They just kept getting worse with each sequel. I love the first film. House 4. William Cat does return. He was in the first film. But it's just uh, not as good as the original. I can only watch it for certain scenes and that's about it. But yeah. The original House film is a classic. And yeah, so that is House. Great film. And then we got let's see if you can see that well or not. Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Which is a good one as well. This was originally going to be Creep Show 3, from my understanding, but they decided to make it a Tales from the Dark Side movie. And George A. Romero and Stephen King are involved. So that's a good one. So that's Tales from the Dark Side movie. And then we got a John Carpenter Master of Fear 4 film collection, which has the thing... Prince of Darkness, They Live, and Village of the Damned. Which, you know, all of them are pretty decent. The Thing was never really my thing, <laughs> to be honest. The remake in the 80s, John Carpenter's The Thing. I know people love the film, but I just felt it was kind of boring. There's some cool special effects. It's kind of a slow-paced movie. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I I know this is controversial, but I like this one more. And that's the 2011 remake. <laughs> People are going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah, I just I like this one better. I know, that's sacrilege, but it's just my opinion. But yeah, pretty cool set here. I like uh, They Love. That's a really good one. Prince of Darkness is okay. Village of the Dam is actually a pretty good movie. But that's my John Carpenter Master Fear 4 film collection set, which is really cool. And then we got The Blob, which is a classic 80s film. This is a remake to the original The Blob, which I prefer the remake. It's, it's just a film I grew up with, and you know, Chuck Russell directed this film, and he's best known for, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, 
among many other films, but this is a pretty good film, underrated in my opinion. So that is the Blob remake from the 80s. And then we got another underrated film, Brain Scan with Edward Furlong. I always had a soft spot for this one, I always enjoyed it growing up. I don't know, it's just one of those movies that, you know, I don't know what it is. It's, it's not a perfect film by any means, but I don't know. I just I got some enjoyment out of it. So that is Brain Scan. And then we got another underrated film, which is Shocker, which is my second favorite Wes Craven film. This is another film that the horror community does not show a whole lot of respect for but I've always enjoyed it. I thought it was a really cool movie. Definitely one of Wes Craven's better movies, in my opinion. So that is Wes Craven's Shocker. No more Mr. Nice Guy. And then we got The Lost Boys, a classic vampire flick from the 80s. This is a good one. And then the sequels, which are in here as well. Lost Boys, A Tribe, which is a okay sequel. I mean, the sequels were okay. I think they're all decent. That was the second film, and this is the third film, Lost Boys, The Thirst. Corey Feldman returns in the sequels. Yeah, I, I want to say this one's better than the second film. So that is Lost Boys of Thirst. And then we got Resident Evil and Resident Evil Apocalypse. This is a two movie set. I always enjoyed these films. I like all of them. I know people, some people don't like them. I don't know why. I think Mila kicks ass in these films. They're fun popcorn flicks, in my opinion. So that's Resident Evil and Resident Evil Apocalypse. And then we got the third film, Resident Evil Extinction. They're all good in their own way. And I'll just show this real quick. This is the fourth film, Resident Evil Afterlife, which is a nice... Uh, Still book. And then we got Resident Evil Retribution, which is the fifth film. And the last film, which is Resident Evil The Final Chapter. Yeah, they're all good, in my opinion. And then we got Fright Night. This is a classic 80s horror film. It's probably one of my favorite vampire flicks. Really good movie. Definitely worth checking out. Beautiful artwork as always. I just love this artwork back in the day. It's really cool. Really scary looking. Yeah, this is Sprite Night. The original classic. 80s horror flick. And then we got the sequel, Fright Night Part 2, which is a really good sequel. This DVD is really hard to find. It's out of print. It was never released on Blu ray that I know of. So I don't know why this movie's so hard to find. I got lucky and was able to get this. For a fairly decent price. I don't know why it's so hard to find and why it's so expensive. But this is Fright Night Part 2, a decent sequel. And we have a classic here Jeepers Creepers. And then the sequel, Jeepers Creepers 2, which is a good sequel. I don't have Jeepers Creepers 3. I'm not sure if I want to get it or not. It wasn't that great. <laughs> And then we have a 
thriller triple feature that has Leviathan, Life Force, and Burnt Offerings. Now, Leviathan was never one of my favorite movies, to be honest. I was never a big fan of that film. There's only a couple classic moments. One of them is Peter Weller saying, um, if you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm going to pop your tops, all six of them. And then the ending with Peter Weller punching Meg Foster and then him saying, much better. Honestly, that's the only thing that was memorable about that movie was those two scenes. The creature special effects didn't care for. I actually thought they sucked, which is sad because Stan Winston did the special effects for this film, but I don't know what happened. The, the special effects weren't very good in this film. But I mainly got it for Life Force. I've never seen Burnt Offerings, but yep. Yeah, Leviathan, not a fan of that film. But I do like this film, which is Deep Star 6. That's a really good one. And that came out at the same time that Leviathan did. I always thought this was a lot better. You know, Deep Star 6 was a lot better film than Leviathan. Just liked the story better. Thought the creature was more interesting looking. Yeah, that's uh, Deep Star 6. Underrated film. And then we have a hidden gem here. This is The Midnight Hour. This came out in the 80s. This is a TV movie. And I've always liked this film. It's a pretty good movie, actually. It's one of those films that slipped through the cracks. Not a lot of people talk about this movie, and they should. It should get discovered. Um, it's just one of those movies that's very underrated. And the film is very inspired by Michael Jackson's th thriller, which you can tell. It was definitely inspired by it. It's just one of those movies I grew up with, and it's a really cool horror film for television. Definitely a good TV movie. You can't even tell it's a TV movie. It looks more like something that would come out in the theater. Pretty good movie. So that is The Midnight Hour. Definitely worth checking out. And getting discovered by people. You know, more people should talk about this film. It should have more of a following than it does. And it's out of print. It's really hard to find, but... That is The Midnight Hour, classic film in my opinion. And then we have Link. I don't know if you can see it very well or not. That's the cover. Link with Elizabeth Shue and she's fighting a orangutan. <laughs> not too bad of a film. Kind of Underrated. Pretty decent uh, little horror film. Yeah, that is Link. Good, pretty good film, in my opinion. Another underrated gem here. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. One Dark Nights with Meg Tilly, Elizabeth Daly, which she's best known for doing voice acting and like shows like Rugrats and stuff like that and Adam West pretty good horror flick slipped through the cracks not a lot of people talk about and it's a, always a film I always enjoyed so that is One Dark Night and then we got Phenomena which is known here in the United States. It's called Creepers, which is an edited version of this. This is from Dario Argento with Jennifer Connelly. 
in one of her first starring roles. I always enjoyed the film. It has a nice uh, atmosphere to it and it's kind of a little scary little flick. So that is Phenomena. And then we get Suspiria from Dario Argento. That's a classic film. This is the original film. Really good movie. Really good visuals. A really scary flick for 70s film. And this is a nice set. This is a this is a three disc. It has uh, it has goblin music in it. it. Has a soundtrack. It actually has a CD in there with a goblin score. <laughs> That's some pretty freaky damn music in that. But yeah, pretty good film from Dario and Argento. This is probably my favorite film of his. This and Phenomena. It's probably my two favorites from him. So that is Suspiria. Classic original. Fuck the remake. The remake sucked. <laughs> and then we get The Ring, which is a good film. And its sequel, The Ring 2. I have the third film somewhere. Rings, which is not good. <laughs> well, <laughs> nowhere near as good as the first two movies. <laughs> but I have it in my collection. And then we got Nightmares, another film that slipped through the cracks. Pretty decent horror film, anthology film. And then the classic Clyde Barker's Hellraiser, the original film, with Pinhead on the front cover. This is my favorite Hellraiser film. And then we got Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, which is probably the last really good Hellraiser film, in my opinion. And then they made several other Hellraiser films, which this is a Hellraiser collection of six films with, let's see what it shows on here. It shows Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, Hellraiser 4, Bloodline, Hellraiser 5, Internal, Hellraiser 6, Hellseeker, Hellraiser 7, Deader, and Hellraiser 8, Hellworld. Yeah, a lot of Hellraiser in here. Hellraiser 3 is pretty good. Hellraiser 4, I remember being okay. The sequels afterwards kind of got not too good. I believe that from 5 through 8, I believe they were just direct to video. 4 was the last one, I believe, that came out in the theater. So, that is my Hellraiser collection of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So, I think I'm going to end it here, and I'll show more later on. But this is my horror DVD collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys have a good day. Take it easy.